Hello, I'm Introducing and welcome to Let's Play Hearts of Iron 4 Together for Victory DLC. So, the new patch and DLC for uh, Hearts of Iron 4 is coming out shortly, at the time of recording at least. And that includes the DLC to go for the victory, which uh, introduces a few new things, but uh, uh, in notably includes uh, new like trees for different things that, uh, say, the colonies of Britain can do. Stuff like Australia, New Zealand, India have a lot of new trees and options about how they participate and how they can break away and do their own thing. And of course, we'll be diving in and playing as one of those to be able to experience the game with its new features. We're going to go and we are going to play as Australia. Uh, leader John Curtin, uh, we are democratic to begin with, we'll probably go communist, um, I'm gonna go communist because I don't want to stay as democratic, I want to break away, and I want to break away and uh, have a different place where I want to, you know, go it, go it without Britain anymore, we're gonna stick it to them, uh, and we're gonna go communist, maybe, we'll see how it goes, but I'm going to tend towards communist just because, two reasons, firstly, Twitter, I asked, they told me to go communist, and also because it's slightly harder than going fascist, and, you know, sure. I mean, we're also playing as Australia. That's pretty hard to begin with. Uh, Labour's ruling party. Elections, uh, one year's time. Okay. Democratic regime. We have the Great Depression affecting us. Consumer factories, 20%. National output uh, for factories is minus 25. And our unity is down by 10. Good. Excellent. Right. So we're going to select Australia. And hopefully at some point we'll get to invade New Zealand. And maybe, I don't know, Indonesia, etc. My, my general plan for this playthrough is uh, we have... Oh, I like, zoomed a bit far in. We have a lot of stuff around here that is fairly lightly defended, but has a lot of natural resources, particularly rubber. And once you get control of this area, rubber becomes an export that you can trade for factories, and then you use those factories to buff yourself. At least that's the plan. Uh, so the plan will be to kind of flip over, go communist or fascist fairly early on, Get a couple of extra research slots and do some like opportunity attacks. I mean, if we can get New Zealand without, you know, Britain getting involved, that'd be grand, but I kind of think they will end up getting involved nonetheless. Um, there's no real non aligned countries. We've got like British Malaya, Dutch East Indies, etc. Again, that is a colony of the Netherlands instead of being directly controlled by them now. Uh, hopefully, they all break away and then we can attack them, but I, I somewhat doubt it. Uh, Siam might be a decent target. Of course, we'd have to do a naval invasion, but we'll see how it goes. So, let's dive in and get our game on. Oh, yeah. They come from a land down under. Uh, we are very poorly equipped. Yes, that is not good. But over here, yep. Okay, yeah, we need uh, infantry equipment. <sighs> okay, fine. Three military factories. We have four. Well, quite frankly, they're all going to need to be on infantry equipment for now. I'd like to get artillery. You know how much I love artillery, but for now, yeah, okay. Well, we'll dedicate one to artillery. We need to be able to at least get the. Uh, uh, what's it called? Efficiency cap up. Alright, national focus. So we've also got, by the way, this continuous focus dealie. Uh, remains active until you change focus again. You can, like, select these and start them, but you need to have a requirement of unlock 10 more focuses, at which point you can uh, pick a continuous focus to be able to just be active in the background. And I think you can change out of them and stuff. So that'll be something to look at later. For now, however... We can go with either support the policy of appeasement. But we need Germany to have completed the Rhineland thing. We're not going to do that because that is a way to go, um, I believe, with United... Yeah, strength and ties, Singapore strategy. Yeah, so that is mostly about, hi, sure, Westminster, we'll help you out, etc. Blah, blah, blah. Now, the other choice is to go, never another Gallipoli. Uh, we add 200.01 pawns. I, I call them pawns because that is what the symbol is. However, it's more to do with, if we check here, uh, Dominion. Um, currently, this is being ruled and this is being independent and being free. So, we need uh, 800 more pawns. Independence, I don't know what you want to call it. There's probably a name for it. Uh, to be free, we also need uh, political power. So, that's a good start. We're going to go for never another Gallipoli. Just make sure we get the ball rolling there. Um, do, 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 do. However, you will also note, if we go to research, 
Commonwealth research. Reduced research time for technologies reduced by other Commonwealth countries. Each member with a tech uh, reduces time by 10%. And then you see the number of technologies people have there. In fact, we are behind the most. Wow, that is, that is pretty bad. We're at 10. Everyone else is more than us. Like, even New Zealand. New Zealand is 19. Hmm. So this is a way of basically saying, look, if you are part of a dominion, uh, you can at least share technologies, etc. And there are some things later on in our uh, discipline tree. I can't what it's called. What is it called? Focus tree. In our focus tree that allow you to basically pick up... Uh, let's go. There we go. 5% uh, sharing bonus with the Commonwealth. Uh, if we have a look down here. Japan. There we go. We can share with Japan. Uh, Japan joins the Japanese research group. Um, research city excursions. We go and join the Soviet Union. So you can join with other bigger nations to be able to help you out as well. Our research slots, as per usual, will be focused towards production and construction. As I normally do at the beginning of the game, just to be able to get our industry up. We only have the two research slots at the moment, so I definitely would like to buff that as we go on. Uh, Portugal, hi. How are you doing? Are you just Portugal directly, or...? Uh, Portuguese Timor, yeah, so this is another Dominion. Uh, our manpower, incredibly low! There will be one day where I will not take the focus tree, um, effectively, what is it called? What is it called? A land doctrine, there we go. It will be one day where I don't take the mobile warfare doctrine. It will not be this day, because I want the recruitable population buff. I mean, you could say, oh, Mass Assault has a buff, doesn't it? Let's go find, where's the Mass Assault buff? No, no, no. 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 There we go, recruitment population, 5%. That's the other choice. I'm not sure it's a great choice. It's mostly to do with just buffing plain infantry, which has its advantages. Uh, because as a country without a lot of industry either, we're going to be somewhat reliant on our infantry, at least to begin with. Um, but the downside here is you get a lot of recovery rate, etc. But then you get out supply minus 30% and effective partisans 20. 20 partisans? Yeah, forget that. Um, the five recruit population though, pretty damn nice. Here, a two and a three. Eh, it's okay. Uh, the buffs up here are also pretty decent. Mass Assault is certainly something we could think about, but I kind of think it benefits countries with uh, a lot of infantry and stuff to begin with and not industry. We don't have either. Uh, so, free civilian factories. What I'm going to say for the moment is, honestly, we need to build more civilian factories. After that, then we'll build some military factories at the end. Just get two there in Queensland. Because uh, that's going to take them quite a while. I've only got three going at the moment. And that's largely going to be because we've got uh, the Great Depression. We've also got export focus. Uh, so there we go. Civilian economy. That's the one I was thinking of. So let's unpause the game and see where we end up. Oh, actually, uh, pause again. Free dockyards. Aha. I'm not used to this layout. I'm used to the bigger um, production interface, and sadly that mod, it says it doesn't work. I haven't honestly tried it. I'm going to wait. I'm, I can wait a little while, especially for a country like this with a f pretty mediocre industry. So we want to get a convoy going. Oh, we have to trade for oil. Damn it. We also probably get... I want to say a submarine. Dutch East Indies, since you're close by. And there goes one of my very few civilian factories. God damn it. Got two. Two factories. Low manpower. Yes, I'm producing total artillery without a... Uh, template for it. That's fine. Ooh. Achievements only available. Oh, go away. Sod off. 
Toggle music controller. Ooh. Right. Dominion of Canada. Anything else? Is Gibraltar separate? United Kingdom. This is actually Portugal. I said Portuguese East Timor. That's the name of the province before. Um, like, yeah, you're Dominion of Canada. British Raj. Siam is not guaranteed by anyone, so that's probably going to be a decent target. France directly controls this. British Malaya, British Malaya. Philippines, of course, is defended by... Is a puppet, sorry, of the US government. Japan, Japan. Okay, let's go to five times speed. And see what starts happening. It's very weird to, honestly, very weird to look at the Second World War map now, because I'm so used to playing the First World War map from the Great War mod. I'm like, yeah, but Austro-Hungary should be here. Wait, why is the Austro-Hungary not here? Um, also, Finland being existing. How's Ethiopia doing? Getting your butt kicked. A little bit. Oh, look at that little navy. We'll put a commander in charge for the moment. Um, air controller? Sure. Not that going to make a difference. At least you're level four. Austria seeks distance from the Commonwealth. In a speech this morning, Prime Minister John Curtin announced the Australian government's dedication to growth and stability as an oceanic state. This means looking to new shores than those of Britain's Europe. As the Australian people can no longer bear the weight of foreign conflicts on their shoulders, in a direct reference to the King's speech at the open of the last parliament, John Curtin hit the point home by stating, Never another Gallipoli. Gallipoli. Uh, really good song by Sabaton. But anyway, uh, the rapturous cheer from the crowds indicate a new era of Australian politics has begun. Where it will end, the world can only begin to speculate. We stake our own path. Right. Well, that is the beginning of our Go It Alone. We can now choose... To do protect the homeland, which is basically a breakaway, sever ties with the UK, make friends with the US, protect the Dutch colonies, etc. Blah 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 blah. Preemptive intervention by attacking Japan, or abandon the Westminster system. Democracy starts going down. Uh, daily autonomy progresses by plus one. Changes the popularity of the communists and the fascists both got by five percent. So it's a little bit on the side of yeah, you could go either way right now. We will begin this. I want to see how the world plays out before we really get down the road, either one way or the other, to communist or fascist. I want to kind of pick one of them. Uh, but I will be going communist if there doesn't seem to be any particular decisive factor. Now, one thing I want to do, actually, before we go further on, is I need to change you to... Um, here. Victoria. Okay, cool. Modify government. Hmm. So I can't get like the fascist demagogue and stuff. They're kind of locked behind uh, future focus tree stuff. Uh, I'll go quartermaster. Eh. War industrialist. Military factory again. Eh. Industrial concern. Electronics research time minus 7%. Industrial, minus 10%, minus 10. But you're cheaper. I can see the argument there. But I'd rather hold out. Theorists, no. No. Is this the only one where I can afford anything? Yeah, because I've got a, a cheap... No. Oh. You know what? I'm not researching electronics right now. Otherwise, I might be like, yeah, it's actually worth grabbing you in the interim. Just have something in the interim. For now, we'll wait. I need world tension to be able to fix that. Okay. Let's have a quick look at what our uh, actual, like, exports are. We've got a little bit of surplus of steel. 
a little bit of surplus of tungsten. And that is it. Excellent. We have very little in the way of trade or to be able to support our own military. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Australia, you are not well off, are you? Okay, world. Do something. Throw me a curveball. I mean, don't, but I know you're gonna, so you might as well get it over with. Uh, we'll go to Melbourne. Group up. And at least we've got a ton of generals. I mean, we've got a... Have we got more generals than... No, we've got one general for each division. Excellent. That is a very good use of your time. Uh, we will put... We've got a four, a four, a four, and then we've got some with buffs. Alan Vasey, you are now in charge of this division with your bonuses to hill fighting. Do well. Yes, I'm using a British voice because I don't really have an Australian accent. Also because at this point, like, there's probably still a lot of Brits involved in the military over there. I'm not an expert, so, you know, might not necessarily be the case, but uh, I, I would assume, like many Dominions, a lot of British uh, are parachuted into a lot of top roles. Wouldn't be complete, but it'd be certainly a, it'd be a big feature, I imagine. Although, I'd be interested to see what people, like, who know more about the Australian situation in the Second World War, uh, like, comment down below. Right. We can't do either of these because we don't have our autonomy progress over 55%. Of course, it's ticking up, but it's not over 55%. So, let us target another research slot because right now, not really happy with a research situation. We need world tension at 20% for this. There is a research slot here, but can't do that. Right. Where are other research slots? Down here. I need to be fully independent for that one. Ooh. Um, there's some collaboration ones there. Australia joins research faction. Okay. Is that it? Have we only got... Yeah, we can only get up to four. So we need research collaboration here. And that is only if we're fully independent. And at war. Wait. Is in a faction. At war. Australia's fully independent. Oh, right. So, yeah. We need to be fully independent. We need to be fully independent, but we can be in a faction. Okay. Um, we must be in a faction, in fact. And the other country is in a faction in Australia. Must have more factories than 50. So, we need to be in a faction with, like, someone big. Okay. What if we go over here? Research bonus to land doctrine. Blah, 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 blah. These are the buffs to land doctrines. Or we could go for adding structure or a research bonus to industry. Well, I'm going to go with that. That's a great way to get down onto the extra, like, factories, etc. Ooh, hello. Basic machine tools. Combat log. And, ooh, this is pretty cool. So you can look at each front and decide where the most damage is coming from. That's nice. I like that addition. Uh, all right. We are going to have to go for concentrated. We need the benefit of that concentrated buff. So uh, we'll start with that. Hopefully we'll be able to get the construction soon because we're going to need that as well. Ah, uh, hello. How are you down here? Good, good, good. Good, good. Spanish Civil War. Okay, um, let's see how this works out for you. I wonder if they've changed it, because nearly always, at least in the last patch, Nation of Spain won. I actually haven't seen it go the other way. Uh, not since the game very first released. At which point it was always, you know, what you call yourself, Republican Spain. Republican Spain winning. So we'll see if this changes that. I don't think it will. It looks very much like uh, National Spain are going to win. Which, you know, is historically correct and all that. But uh, can I want it to spice it up a little bit. You know, want a, little, a little bit of chance of it going differently. Okay, closer support. Yeah, I'm just going to disband you so I can pull you out wherever I need to. Right, there is our construction buff. And I could go for the resource gain efficiency, but at the moment, not massively something I'm concerned with. Uh, right now... Our resources are, well, minimal. 10% of that is not very much at all. So we're going to go for the research time buff of 2%. Which is not much. But it's something. And my god, we need it. At least we've got a negative 30% to the uh, research time. 
I believe that's because most other people in the faction already have it. Everyone else is like, yeah, we've got electronics, we've had them for ages, and we're like, uh, fire, good. No, we've got bulbs. You put electricity through a filament and... Fire. Good. Yes, Australia. God damn it. Australia's going to be an economic powerhouse and a research powerhouse when we're done. Uh, right. Can we do these yet? No, autonomy's not high enough. Well, let's get the standard gauge railway then. How is our autonomy doing? Um... Okay. Well, it's ticking upwards. By the time this next thing finishes, give or take a day or two, we should be able to do the breakaway and be communist or fascist. Yeah, Ethiopia are going down. Not that I expect much different. The games of the 11th Olympiad. The 11th Olympiad games were held in Berlin, Germany. I and mean, we used as basically a massive propaganda thing for Nazi Germany. Yeah. Republicans are losing out massively. Ah, is this to be expected? Available planes in reserve. I'm aware. Modify government. Yeah, actually, I really should do that. Could have done that for a little while. Uh, we will go for... Ooh, industrial electronics. Industrial. BHP steel, please. Right, well, there is our electrical mechanical engineering. Let's go for computing. One person has that, so we've got a 10% buff. We should certainly be careful, by the way, about when we break three of our research group, because we would like to make that as late as possible to be able to grab their techs, but as early as possible that we can actually start going our own way and have an impact by the time war happens. Like, ideally, I would like to be able to invade Siam, it being the only person in the area who isn't either a puppet or under the sway of someone else. I'm looking at New New Zealand and the Dutch East Indies, let's be honest. Right, how are you looking down here? Right, Ethiopia was taken. You're getting more equipment. Oh, production. Leadership post in the Soviet Union. Okay. Standard gauge railway. And we still need like a thousand more rifles. Dear God. Right. Okay. So we can do support you. No, 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 we can't. 55%. 10 more days. There we go. Right. Don't, oh, I don't know if we progress. We, over. All right, here we go. There we go. It needs to be over. I have to wait one more day. Uh, so we can either go down the fascist route, or we can go down the communist route. Now, I'm since this is a good place to end the episode, I'm going to take the feels from people in the comments down below as well into consideration. Uh, communist is going to be slightly harder, because we've got Japan nearby, and they are fascist, and they're going to be exerting their influence. That said, if we mainline down the fascist tree, and we get down to war in Japan, before anyone else gets involved, uh, for instance, if Japan don't join the Germans quick enough, we could actually declare war on them as part of the fascists, get the access to fight Japan. And that might be interesting to see how it goes. Uh, alternatively, you know, if we go down this side, we can, like, get China on side or whatever. But the downside of that is, um, well, I'd like China because it's got manpower there. It's certainly something that I'm looking forward to in my sphere of influence. It's either them or the British Raj for manpower. So there are, there are pluses and minuses to both sides. So I'd like to see people like talk about it in the comments below, say their reasoning, etc. Give me an idea of what you want me to go for, and I'll take that into account when we uh, pick at the beginning of the next episode. But for now, I've been Enter Elysium. If you've enjoyed, please remember to like, you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. And of course, do leave a comment if you uh, so wish. Uh, also consider hitting the bell icon next to subscribe so you actually get notified about my videos, because subscribing otherwise doesn't mean anything these days. 
And of course, as per usual, when you're a new series, please do uh, do all the liking, subscribing stuff, and stay shiny.